Hi everyone, it's Taryn. And Stella from the Dice Tower. Thanks for joining us. Today we'll be teaching you how to play Patriot, a game designed by Anthony Kirkham and published by Wild Robot Games. We are using a prototype copy here of the game, and so the rules and components may not be final. Let's get to it. In Patriot, players are key political figures in the volatile nation of Carmonia. On the surface, players will be working together to keep the country afloat, earning taxes, furthering infrastructure and science, while dealing with crises, growing discontent and rioters, and the demands of the assassins who have their eyes on the president's life. But be warned, each player has a hidden objective, and there are traitors in your midst and players with secondary interests. Whichever player or players can meet their hidden objectives by the end of the game will be the winners. To set up, first lay out the Carmonia board. These four coloured regions near the top represent the locations you'll be taking actions. In the middle is the central government that you'll be defending, and down the bottom is a number of other draw decks and discards. Set the markers to zero on these three tracks. Taxes, Threat Level, and Civil Unrest. And these will be rings rather than solid markers, so you can see the numbers in the final version. In the War Room, shuffle up and place the Riot cards. In the Laboratory, shuffle and place the Scientific Discovery cards. In the Surveillance Centre, shuffle and place the Beacon cards, and then deal four beacons face up onto these four spaces. There is no setup for the Treasury. In the bottom left, look through the brief deck to find the eight cards labelled Super Brief. Set those to the side for now, and then shuffle what's left and place them on the draw deck. Down the bottom, separate all of the influence cards into their four constituent decks. Finance, Spy, Science, and War. Each card is worth a number of influence between one and five. And you'll shuffle each deck separately before turning it face down. Then take the top 10 cards from each of these four decks and shuffle them into a single face down pile called the Public Opinion Pile. Finally, you'll create a pile of five letters, choosing one representing each day of the game. Lay them face down in the middle and flip the top letter face up. All players roll the die and the highest number is the President and chooses one of the three President cards. Remaining players choose their characters in clockwise order, and each player puts an action point tracker on their highest numbered blue space on this track. Take note of any of your special strengths and weaknesses. These can include some once per game or once per round abilities, and you'll use these ability used markers to track when you've used them. Put each player's standee on their space of the turn order track, president first, and then all other players in clockwise order. And in turn order, players take starting influence of their choice from any deck. The president gains nothing, the second player gains one, the third player gains two, and so on. Players may only choose an influence if they don't have a zero next to that type of influence on their character card. Now it's time to deal out allegiance cards, which will tell you your objective for the game, which could be to save the president, to save the president with a secondary objective, or to kill the president. Exactly how you do this depends on your player count, but allegiance cards will always be dealt out twice during the game, once at the start of round one, and once at the start of round three, meaning your allegiance can change during the game. When dealing allegiances, create the deck as described and deal one to each player. When a non-presidential player receives an allegiance card, they look at it, but may not show it to any other players unless otherwise instructed. Once you have two allegiance cards, your allegiance is determined by a hierarchy. If either of your cards is kill the president, then your allegiance is to kill the president. If you have both green and yellow save the presidents, then your allegiance is your yellow save the president, which means you must both save the president and achieve your secondary mission. If you have two yellow save the presidents, then you must save the president and complete one of your missions. And it's only if you have two green cards that your mission is simply to save the president. 
When the President is dealt an allegiance card, nobody may look at it, not even the President. You're treating this card as if it has been burned from the game. Irrespective of the cards drawn, the President acts as if their card is Save the President. For players who have the Kill the President allegiance, there are two ways to do this. The most common is to make sure the threat level increases to level 6. This is mostly done by encouraging riots and causing these semi-cooperative objectives to fail. A more direct but more difficult way to win is to call and win an assassination vote against the President. Patriot is played in up to five rounds, and each round is first played in turns, starting from the first player and going round the table. Each player's turn is resolved in three steps. Firstly, the player will gain influence cards according to their character. Then the player will spend action points to take actions on the main board, as well as take any number of free actions from their card or the board. Then the player draws and resolves a brief, and this may be a choice that the player may take, either positive or negative for the country, or a semi-cooperative objective which all players secretly play influence into in the hope of either gaining the good effect or avoiding the bad. Once all players have taken a turn, you'll resolve the letter demand for this round, determining whether the team succeeded or failed. If there are any riots in play, you'll resolve them, adding rioters to the board to block out action spaces. And you'll clean up and reset for the next round. So now let's have a look at all the different actions you can take. To take an action, move your standee to that action space. If there is a rioter present, then you cannot take that action, but troops and other characters do not block you out. Then pay the printed action point cost by moving your marker down, as well as any other printed cost. You can ignore the number printed next to the word defense space. This is used only when you're placing rioters. The yellow location is the country's treasury, and this is all about gaining money for the country. Anytime you gain coins, you place them into the treasury, and those are available for any players to spend. There are four actions here. The first action is to pick up finance influence. It costs one action point and can be done at most twice per turn. To take the action, simply draw the top card from the finance influence deck and add it to your hand. The second action is to gain coins from the bank, and you can either spend four action points and gain two civil unrest to gain two coins, or spend seven action points and gain four civil unrest to gain five coins. Third is to raise base taxes. This will cost you six action points and four civil unrest to increase taxes by $2. You don't gain any money right away, but you'll gain the taxes into the treasury at the end of each round. Increasing civil unrest will bring you closer to riots, but I'll explain how riots work a little later. The fourth action is briefly predict the future. It costs three action points and gives you some control over the game's random card draws. You can either draw the top two brief cards, Look at them, and then put one back on top of the deck to resolve this turn, with the other one going on the bottom of the deck. Or you can do the same with the scientific discoveries, drawing the top two cards, looking at them, and then discarding one and returning the other to the deck. The surveillance centre is largely about launching and using beacons, which are generally cheaper ways of doing some of the other actions in the game. The first action is to pick up a spy influence, and this works the same way as the equivalent space in the treasury. Second is to launch a beacon. It will cost you four action points and four coins from the treasury to launch one of these four face-up beacons. Put a coin from the supply onto the launched spot to indicate it's been launched. Alternatively, you can spend two action points and two coins to launch an unrevealed beacon taking the top beacon card and then putting it onto any one of these spaces, replacing the beacon that was there, and again, marking it as launched. As an action, you can use a launched beacon. Although this is shown separately up here, it counts as being part of defense space too, so you can't do this if there's a rioter here. The board indicates that there's no cost for this action, but each beacon will have its individual cost listed on it. 
pay the cost, resolve the printed effect, and move the launched marker over to the used side. These will only go back at the end of the round, so each beacon can only be used once per round. Not every beacon card can be launched or used. These orange ones just fill up the space. If you don't like the choice of beacons, or have some other ulterior motive, then you can use this action to reprogram the beacons for three action points. Discard any number of launched or unlaunched beacons from the board, and then replace them from the top of the deck. Newly placed beacons are unlaunched, even if the ones they replaced were launched. The last action is to call an assassination vote for seven action points, and here you'll identify another player, could be the president or someone else, that you want to try to assassinate. This then initiates a vote in spy and war influence among all of the players. Starting with the active player and going clockwise, each player has one chance to play any number of influence cards into the vote pile, including zero. Then also add the top two cards from the public opinion deck into the vote. All these cards are then shuffled up and revealed one at a time. War and spy influence count positively towards the vote, while finance and science influence count negative. Add up the influence score. Here it's plus 12 and minus 4 for 8. If it meets or exceeds 4 per player for the president, or 2 per player for anybody else, then the assassination is successful. The victim of a successful assassination reveals whether their allegiance is kill the president or not. If the victim was aiming to kill the president, then they're not out of the game, but their role is severely reduced. They have zero action points from this point forward, discard half their influence rounded down, lose half their science markers and all their scientific discoveries, which we'll talk about next, and from this point forward can only spend their turn gaining influence and spending influence into votes. Finally, reduce the threat level by one. If the assassinated player's allegiance is save the president, then threat goes up by one, and they must reveal one allegiance card. They too discard half their influence cards and half their science markers and all of their scientific discoveries, and must discard their character, but they'll gain a new character from those left available and continue playing as normal. At the laboratory, players take science actions. The first action is to pick up science influence, like in the other areas. At the second space, use the power of science to try to deal with civil unrest. The player spends three action points and then rolls the eight-sided die. That player can spend any number of influence cards, regardless of type or number, to increase the value of the die by one per card. Then increase or decrease civil unrest according to the table. Here, you can try to gain science markers, and to do this, spend two action points and again, roll a d8. This time, you can increase the number with science influence. Two influence will give you an increase of one on the die. Then gain science markers according to the table. Unlike money, these are not communal. Science markers belong solely to the player who gained them. The last action is make a scientific discovery. It costs four science markers, but no action points. Draw the top two scientific discovery cards, and then choose one to keep. These may give you an ongoing ability, a once-off ability after which you discard the card, or something resolved right away. If when you draw, you get at least one card which says reject, then you must resolve the negative effect of each reject card you drew but you still get to keep your positive science card. The fourth area is the war room, but before we talk about its actions, we need to talk about riots. A riot will be initiated when the civil unrest marker reaches six. When this happens, reset the track and draw a riot card, which you'll place in the bottom right corner of the board. Upon drawing a riot card, you'll resolve the text according to your player count. Let's say, for example, it's a four-player game, and I'll add two rioters to the treasury. For each rioter placement, roll the d4, and then place a rioter in the matching numbered space. 
The game has minis as well as standees, but we're using the standees because it's clearer to see from overhead. If when you roll the die, there are still open spaces, but the number you roll already has a rioter on it, then you get lucky and you don't place a rioter for this placement. But if all rioter spaces are full in a location, then the next placement goes on defense space 5, which increases threat by 1. Unlike the other locations, the war room only has three numbered defense spaces and doesn't have a space 5. As long as at least one rioter is deployed by this sequence, then you'll increase the threat level by one, but this occurs only once per riot card. The riot card remains in play and may be joined by further riot cards until the riot is quelled. So as you can see, riots coming out onto the board will block a lot of your action spaces and can increase the threat. The war room actions are all about dealing with the risk of rioters. First, you can pick up war influence cards, the same way as you can in the other locations. Second, you can deploy troops. At a cost of four, six, or eight action points, you can deploy two, three, or four troops, putting them on any defense spaces which do not currently contain a rioter. If a rioter is to be deployed to a space containing a troop, then instead of placing it, the troop is removed. Thirdly, for one action point, you can move a troop that's already been deployed to a different location, again, excluding one already containing a rioter. In this way, you'll see that troops are defensive. They can only deal with rioters as they come onto the board. To deal with rioters already on the board, you must take this action, roll to execute a rioter. Spend three action points and roll a d8. If you don't like the result, you can spend any two influence cards to re-roll as many times as you'd like, and then remove as many rioters from the board as your position on the table. If you roll a 1, you instead lose a troop or gain an extra rioter. A riot card remains active and continues to spawn more rioters into play each round until all rioters have been executed from the board using this action or some other effect which executes rioters. Only once the board is free of rioters will any active riot cards be discarded. Additionally, when you first draw a riot card, if, through a combination of troops and lucky rolls, you don't end up placing any rioters in the initial placement, then the riot is over before it starts and you do not gain a threat penalty. The other action you can take on your turn is to put cards or resources into the demands on the letter. It is a free action for you to place influence cards into the letter. And at a cost of four action points, you can move as many coins as you want from the treasury to the letter, called securing them. Meeting these letters is critical for the loyal players because you will generally suffer an increase in threat and other negative penalties for failing to meet the requirements of these letters. Once you've run out of action points, or if you have action points left but choose to end your turn early, you'll move on to resolving a brief. There are three types of brief. The first is a choice brief, and the card will identify one of the players. It could be the person who drew the card, or maybe someone under a criterion, to choose among the choices on the card. Simply make a choice and resolve it. The second is an influence brief. This works in a similar way to an assassination vote. The card will identify one or more types of influence that are needed and we'll show you the consequences based on how many are bid into the vote. In turn order, starting from the active player, players place as many influence cards as they wish into this brief. And again, two cards are added from the public opinion pile. Influence cards are shuffled up and revealed, and this time, unlike with the assassination votes, if there is an ability printed on the influence card, then you'll resolve that now. Then refer to the brief card and count all of the required influence as positive and the non-required influence as negative. Then resolve whichever effect comes out. If an effect tells you to instantly pass a brief, you take the top effect and instantly fail the bottom effect. The third type of brief is a bidding brief and players will be bidding influence to try to either get the highest bidder effect 
or avoid the lowest bidder effect. Starting from the first player, players will bid an amount of influence one at a time around the table, and if they stay in the bid, must always bid more than the previous highest bid. All players must pay their bids, and if there's any tie, this is resolved with a roll of the die. Once all players have resolved their turns, it's time to resolve the end of the round. Return everyone to their positions on the turn order track, and then reset it for the next round. The previous final player becomes first, and all other players shuffle down one step in the order. Now determine whether or not you collectively meet the requirements printed on the letter. This could include securing some coins, doing some sort of action during the round, or committing influence. If it's committing influence, then you'll look through the influence and determine whether you meet the requirements. But this doesn't work like a normal vote. You don't add anything from the public opinion pile, you don't resolve the actions on any influence cards, and you don't score negative for having the wrong type of influence. If you succeed, nothing happens, but if you lose, you'll get the negative fail effect, which usually includes increasing the threat. Then discard all committed resources and flip over the next day's card. Next, for each active riot or riots, resolve the effect the same way you did when you placed the card, that is, adding more rioters to the board with a roll of the dice. You won't gain extra threat from this. This only happens on initial placement. Any beacons which we use are returned to their launched side. The treasury gains money equal to the current level of taxes. And players' action points are reset to their maximum value. You'll now move on to the next round. If at any point the threat level reaches 6, or there is a successful assassination vote against the president, then the kill all president players win immediately. If the president survives five rounds, then the president and all green save the president players win, and the yellow save the president players also win if they meet at least one of their secondary missions. Be warned, all of these things are things that a traitor might do. Incite riots, increase taxes to incite riots, reprogram beacons that are already launched, call an assassination vote against the president, or against another player. So get your best deception and social deduction skills ready to try to defend your curious actions. Patriot can be played as a solo or two-player cooperative campaign, with a number of campaign scenarios driven by both a page and a card representing one of the characters. Gone are the scientific discoveries, replaced by your scenario's card. Also gone are the allegiance cards, the letters, and the ability to assassinate. Several brief and beacon cards are taken out of the deck. The turn order track becomes a round tracker, and each player's standee is placed on the campaign mode tracker, on the base space to begin the game. Check your strengths and weaknesses, and make sure you use the 1-2 to two player variant for your abilities. And for starting influence, gain two of each card in the solo mode, or cards matching your income in the two-player mode. Now, read any further information on your scenario page. This could include additional steps of setup, and it will include your win and lose conditions. You're now ready to play. The game follows a similar flow in the 1-2 to two player version. Each player will take a turn in turn order, and that turn involves gaining influence, taking actions, and resolving a brief. After each player's turn, instead of resolving the letter, you'll resolve the campaign mode tracker. Then you'll set up for the next round. When gathering influence, you gain more influence than you would in the standard game. In a two-player game, you get to draw any two additional cards. And in the one-player game, you draw any four additional cards and gain two science markers. You'll take actions the same way, but there are a few different actions. In the surveillance center, there are now separate spaces for launching beacons and using beacons, meaning that they're not both blocked out by a single rioter as they would have been in the three to six player game. In the laboratory, Defense Space 4 is now an action which is unique to your scenario, and should help you towards the win condition. 
then this new space, which can never be blocked by rioters, allows you to advance on the campaign mode tracker. This costs you four science markers, and simply moves your character one step to the right. Then to end each round where you would normally resolve the letter, you instead resolve the campaign mode tracker, and each player resolves the effect at the bottom of their column. This can involve increasing or decreasing threat, but the main effect will be either the negative event or the positive event, which relates to those corresponding effects on your campaign card. The negative effect will take you further away from this campaign's specific win condition, and the positive effect will bring you closer to it. All characters on positive or negative 2 then return to the base, and then all players are shifted one step to the left on the track. The remaining reset steps are the same as the semi-cooperative game. You'll resolve any riots and add more rioters to the board. You'll gain taxes and reset beacons. Continue playing until you meet the scenario's win or lose condition. And that's how to play Patriot. Check out the project page of Patriot. We'll put the link in the description below so you can check it out. If you found this video useful, please help us by hitting that like button and subscribe to the Dice Tower if you haven't already done so. And if you have any questions, comments or feedback, please leave that in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.